Tokugawa Ieyasu's forces are about to clash with the forces of Toyotomi Hideyori. This battle will determine who will become shogun and unify Japan. soon become entangled in fierce fighting. The sounds of cannons, matchlocks, arrows, spears, swords, and yells of men can be heard all over the battlefield. After much fighting, the day is won by the victorious army of Ieyasu as the forces of Toyotomi fall back in defeat. Now, little stands in the way of Tokugawa Ieyasu to become shogun. Years of peace pass in Japan under the rule of the Tokugawa. European ships come and go, bringing new items to Japan as well as new imports of guns, which were introduced by the Portuguese in 1543. But trade with the foreign powers also brought missionaries who carry the teachings of Christ. Churches are built, and priests teach and spread the tale of the gospel. The Tokugawa have concerns of Christianity spreading, so they place restrictions hoping to slow down Christian influence. However, a farmland incident would ignite a Christian revolt. Under the leadership of Amakusa Shiro, the rebellion grows and soon an army. The Tokugawa were enraged that mere peasants would dare to revolt and orders the army to execute the Christian rebels. The rebels seize and hold a castle to which Tokugawa forces lay siege.
After the siege, more than a thousand Christians were slain. Because of this incident and other events, the shogun, Tokugawa Iemitsu, orders and declares that no longer will there be trade with the barbarians. He closes the country, thus entering an age of isolation. The only exception of who could trade with Japan were the Dutch under very strict restrictions. After defeating the Mexican army, the United States takes California and gains access to the Pacific. In 1852, the President of the United States orders an expedition to force open the gates of Japan with gunboat diplomacy. The one who is to go on this expedition will be a man by the name of Commodore Matthew C. Perry, a veteran of the Mexican-American War. Perry departed with his fleet on November 24, 1853 for Norfolk, Virginia, and heads towards Japan.
On July 8, 1853, Perry's fleet of ships reaches Japan. Perry then orders his ships to reach Edo and ignore Japanese officials. The sight of black ships that spew fire and smoke causes a stir all throughout Japan. Japanese government officials order Perry and his fleet to head towards Nagasaki. Perry ignores them and orders his ships to fire blanks to intimidate them. Shogunate officials accept a letter from Perry written by the President of the United States. Officials then allowed them to land on the beaches to which American soldiers began marching on the beaches. Perry soon departs from Japan, promising to come back for a response. The shogunate officials are shaken and are not sure how to respond. After a few months while Perry is away, he hears of other countries planning on making contact with the Japanese as well, so he departs. Perry returns to Japan prematurely, determined to hear the Shogun's answer. Both parties meet and negotiate terms. After negotiations, the Shogun agreed to the American terms, entering trade with them. Ending 250 years of isolation, the gates of Japan were finally open.
With Japan's gate open comes change, and with change also comes a set of new problems. Japan starts making treaties with other foreign nations such as France and Britain. Although trade was established, the terms and agreements favored Western nations more than Japan itself. The economy faltered and Japanese citizens suffered. But soon, certain events will happen that will change Japan. In 1861, a civil war broke out in the United States of America. The country was divided in two by the Union and the Confederacy. The American Civil War will be known as one of the bloodiest wars in history. Roughly 1,264,000 people will be dead by the end of this conflict. Introduced during the American Civil War were the latest developments in weapons for combat.
Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. Now we are engaged in a great civil war. Testing whether that nation, or any nation so conceived and so dedicated, can long endure. We are met on a great battlefield of that war. We have come to dedicate a portion of that field as a final resting place for those who here gave their lives that that nation might live. It is altogether fitting and proper that we should do this. But, in a larger sense, we cannot dedicate, we cannot consecrate, we cannot hollow this ground. The brave men, living and dead, who struggled here have consecrated it far above our poor power to add or detract. The world will little note nor long remember what we say here, but it can never forget what they did here. It is for us, the living rather, to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they who fought here have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remaining before us that from these honored dead we take increased devotion to that cause for which they gave the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain, that this nation, under God, shall have a new birth of freedom, and that government of the people, by the people, for the people, shall not perish from the earth. Weapons used in the Civil War were shipped to different countries, including Japan, in which they will play a part in ending the Tokugawa Shogunate and changing Japan's future. During the 1860s, isolationists launched a series of attacks on foreigners in the country, hoping to affect Western relations with the shogunate. In 1862, a British merchant by the name of Charles Lennox Richardson came too close with retainers of the Shimatsu and was killed by Satsuma samurai. Frustrated, the British demanded the shogunate to pay 100 pounds for the murders. The Bakufu agreed to pay, as to avoid military retaliation on Edo. However, the Satsuma clan refused to apologize or punish those involved. This would start the Anglo-Satsuma War. On August 6, 1963, a Royal Navy squadron sailed for Satsuma Domain, hoping to pressure the Satsuma.
ships are given the order to open fire, damaging several merchant ships. They then order a bombardment on the port of Kagoshima, causing severe damage. A few months back, Emperor Kome ordered Joji Kono Chokune, translated as Expel the Barbarians. Foreigners living in Choshu were expelled. Coastal batteries opened fire on foreign ships passing through Shimonoseki. On the 16th of July, 1863, the U.S. Navy retaliated and sailed to the Straits of Shimonoseki and attacked, during which they sank and damaged steamships belonging to the Choshu.
A few days later, the French bombarded Choshu and captured its coastal batteries. In August 1863, the Choshu attempted a surprise attack on the Tokugawa shogunate in the imperial capital of Kyoto. The Kimon incident failed, and the instigators were arrested. Tensions between the domains were inflamed, and both sides began preparing and training their armies for conflict, during which Satsuma and Choshu in secret made an alliance. In July 1866, the Shogun prepared the army and launched the second Choshu expedition in order to crush any hint of rebellion from the Choshu clan. Recently modernized Choshu troops prepared for shogunate forces and met them head on.
Against the odds, the Choshu soundly defeated the Shogun's army. The second Choshu expedition was a huge military disaster for the Shogun. Shortly after, both Shogun and Imperial were complicated by the deaths of Emperor Komei and Tokugawa Iemochi. The shogunate realized that in order to deal with the threat, they needed a reformed and more modernized army. In 1867, the new shogun Tokugawa Yoshinobu invited French and British military advisors to train their armies. In January 3rd, 1868, Choshu and Satsuma troops captured the imperial palace of Kyoto and enabled the new emperor Meiji to declare his own restoration. The Tokugawa rejected this, and so the Boshin War finally began.